the region and the city of Milwaukee. This morning we're talking education and Governor Scott Walker's proposal to increase funding for public schools. In this budget, we use the reform dividend to invest more into public schools. We put more into rural schools with unique needs. We do more to improve schools in Milwaukee. We do more to expand programs that help students get early college credits. We do more to expand career and technical education. We do more to help recruit and retain excellent teachers. <laughs> and there you have it, Governor Walker on the record, the state's chief executive proposing additional funding for schools in his proposed budget. But will that funding or what will that funding mean for public schools? So this morning we have Dr. Darian Driver, the superintendent of Milwaukee Public Schools, joining us. And I'd like to know what is your position on Governor Walker's proposed $5.6 million for performance funding? Is it kind of like a bonus? The way that we look at the 5.6 million, on one hand, it is definitely a positive uh, for incentives for schools that are either significantly exceeding expectations or exceeding expectations. Uh, there is some set aside for schools that are going to change one or two ca or two categories on the state report card. But I still would like to see more funding for the schools uh, that are on the lowest category and failing to need, meet expectations. Do you think it's achievable though? Because he's talking about three to four points before you can even get that extra $100 for per pupil. Is that achievable with what you're faced with now with your students? I would say for the schools that are actually in the lower categories, it is achievable. Uh, we do have a number of schools, Rogers Street, uh, Forest Home, Carver, that actually changed categories. It changed two categories uh, since the last time that this was administered. And I realize you can't compare uh, the last year's or the last administration of the report card to this one. Uh, so I think it's more achievable for the lower categories. Once you start to get in those upper 80s, it's actually very hard to move the needle. And so schools that are already in those top two tiers might find it more difficult to be able to continue to increase points. Now, historically, this administration has been more about, well, being frugal. Um, mm -hmm. How upbeat were all of you when the governor came out and said he wants to increase funding to public schools? I think the budget really reflects our belief system around you know, education, the workforce, our economy really being all part of the same continuum. It's not an either or. Uh, education really is an investment. It's an investment uh, in the future, but it's also an investment in your present. And so uh, for us, uh, this really is an opportunity to sustain uh, the programs that we currently have. Um, you know, These are difficult times uh, in K-12, not only at the state level, but at the federal level as well. And so um, hearing this news about a focus on education uh, for us really is going to allow us to continue some of those programs that we started. So the recent report card showed that you had <coughs> met few expectations by the state. Now I granted I've seen that there are a number of schools within MPS that are exceeding or meeting but the challenge you face with those that aren't because that's at least 42 schools right so how how do you move the needle how do you get kids engaged and excited about education? One thing I, I, I want everyone to remember is that we've already shown ourselves that we can do this. Our district was in that bottom category. Now we're in the next rung. And you know our mantra is that you can't stop until you're in the top category. And so uh, we have examples where we've been able to do that every day. And so I think one, focusing on the data uh, and keeping our eye on the ball is really important. Uh, we have a number of programs that work. Um, our intervention blocks uh, that we've done in our schools, more time um, on task, whether it's before and after school programming or additional summer school time. And so. Um, a lot of these strategies is why we're, we are seeing some of the growth that we have seen in some of our schools. You mentioned <clears throat> something in regards to additional summer school time and Governor Walker wants to reward Milwaukee for that by giving them $2.8 million. What will you do with that kind of money? This gives us the opportunity uh, to expand our summer school program, not only for what you would consider traditional programming and credit recovery, okay. uh, but we think of it as our, our whole child uh, education. So more of the social and emotional learning supports, uh, opportunities for service learning, for internships and apprenticeships, and then our J-term that we talked so much about with our changes to our school calendar. Uh, <laughs> I, I want you to be candid here. Yes. I mean, it has much, not much time has elapsed since the, the uh, state takeover seemed very mm -hmm. possible of MPS. Do you all feel like you're just looking over your shoulder all the time that, that the state is, is breathing down your, your, your neck? Honestly, when you're talking about children's lives and trying to make a difference, there should always be that urgency, and that's really the urgency that motivates us every day. And so uh, whether it's the state, whether it's our parents, uh, whether it's our community, you know, we owe it to our children to give them our very best uh, and to, to make sure that we are working with a sense of urgency and to make sure they have 
everything that they need to be successful, uh, whether it's in their academics and their co-curriculars. Um, but when we talk about college career readiness, I mean, these are all of those building blocks to help them get there. So, so for us, it's really about a sense of purpose and urgency uh, that ha has always been there. So there's, there's no resentment about Big Brother. <laughs> we have to move forward. I, I honestly believe a lot of lessons have been learned from last year on all sides of this conversation. Uh, much more focus on partnership and collaboration mm -hmm. and a focus on what's working well in our system and still being open uh, to making the changes that we need to. But honestly, I, I feel that as, as a whole, and I don't mean just MPS, okay. uh, but even working uh, closely with our um, state legislature, people are, want to move forward. We all want to see a better Milwaukee. But where do you get the buy-in, Dr. Driver? Because you have so many people who are against what you're trying to do. And I hear the passion in your voice, um, but the data shows something else. It shows that you're making progress, but still it's not, people don't think it's good enough. How do you get those naysayers to buy into Milwaukee Public Schools? I believe that seeing is believing. And so uh, part of it and why we've tried to really open our doors to our community is so that people can come into the schools, start to see uh, what our children are learning, start seeing what it takes uh, to make sure that our young people are successful. So whether it's volunteering, whether it's mentoring, whether it's participating in one of our collective impact programs, uh, we've seen a groundswell of support uh, from our business, our, our churches, our philanthropic community to support NPS. And so I always feel that it's on those of us that are seeing change in the system to share the work tell everyone else uh, that this change is happening and we invite anyone who doesn't believe it yet just come by and see uh, for yourself uh, you know change takes time and sustainable change takes time because it's very easy you can get a, an immediate uh, bump and increase uh, in student performance but to be able to keep that 10 years from now is ultimately the goal and so um, yes things are moving steadily uh, but I, I want us 10 years from now to not say oh we went backwards but to say oh my goodness we yeah. did it yeah. Dr. we, Driver, did it. Thank we you hope so you're here 10 yeah. years. I will be. Okay. You've heard